over the last five to six years, channels have been popping up on YouTube doing an amazing job of highlighting street food icons all across the nation. As foodies, and people who just have been working in the industry for a while, it fills us with both joy and inspiration to see all these local staples getting to show off what makes them so important and unique to their communities, and the food cultures that they've been able to help establish. But for a lot of us, all we get to do is enjoy these creations and enjoy these people and personalities through the screen. But what if we could all actually try these iconic creations from the comfort of our own home? What if we use this as an excuse to teach y'all how to make better food from scratch at home? Or what if maybe the munchies have set in and I'm just looking for an excuse to crush a cake shake? Whatever the excuse we're actually reaching for is, all of our concerns will be tackled here as we push into this new series where we're going to recreate iconic street food from across the globe, starting with Chicago's Institute, Portillo's. Now, according to the website, this restaurant that started off as a hot dog cart in 1963 moved its way from killer fast food place and transcended all the way up to having locals claiming that it's not a real trip to Chicago unless you eat at Portillo's. And even though they are known for their incredible dogs, Italian beef sandwiches, and piles of cheesy fries, we're going to focus on something so crazy we honestly hadn't even considered it ourselves and our own fat boy endeavors. And that's the chocolate cake shake. Now, in our research, we learned a few things about this over-the-top milkshake starring their legendary chocolate cake, and as you would hope, it all starts with freshly baked cakes made right in-house at all Portillo's locations. Now, this labor of love is topped with admittedly store-bought fudge frosting, and they make anywhere from about 60 to 200, and no, I did not misspeak, and yes, that was 200 f***ing chocolate cakes a day. Now, as you would imagine, we will not be doing that. Instead, we will settle on showing you guys how to make just an incredibly fluffy and moist chocolate cake from scratch, but we're going to stick to their rules here. So, one, we will be using the store-bought fudge frosting, two pounds, because that's what they use on their cakes. Even though we're going to be making three layers instead of the two, we will be sticking to the two pounds rule. And then we're also going to be not trimming the cakes as they don't do it either. Now, usually you level your cake so that they're easier to decorate stack without them tilting, doing whatever, but we'll, we'll just work past it. Okay. We don't make the rules here. They do. And we're just trying to stay as true to the form as possible. So before we start making our batter, we're going to grease and then line the pans with a mixture of flour and cocoa powder so that the cakes won't stick. So in a bowl, we're going to add two tablespoons of all-purpose flour and two tablespoons of cocoa powder before mixing them until thoroughly combined. Take a couple of seconds of wang jangling there, and then before you know it, it's all mixed together and we're ready to grease up our three 8-inch cake pans. To do this, you're just going to go, you're going you're gonna to grab about a tablespoon, and with a paper towel, you're just going to push it around the pan. And then you're going to grab a dry paper towel, so just a paper towel that doesn't have any of the butter on it, and you're just going to press it into the crevices and try to get a nice even layer all the way around. When you're happy with it, you're going to grab a big spoonful of that cocoa powder and flour mixture. We're going to drop it on into the pan. We're just going to smack it around a little bit. The goal here is to get it to travel all over the pan, leaving a nice even layer, which is going to prevent the cake from sticking later on when we remove it out of the oven. So just a couple of, you know, well calculated and not at all random taps to get it to slide around the lip of the pan. And you're just going to repeat that until all of your cake pans have been lined with it. A cool little trick you probably noticed earlier, we had some parchment paper down. I like to shake it over the top of the parchment paper so any of the excess that falls out, we can just collect by folding that piece, you know, just in half. And then you can pour all of the excess back into the bowl that had your original mixture in it. Now to make our actual cake batter, we're going to start the process off pretty traditionally by going in with three cups or 360 grams of all-purpose flour. And then we're just going to sift it, which it means we're going to take a strainer of sorts where the flour can pass through, and we're just going to pass it through it so that there's no clumps or lumps in the actual mixture heading into making our batter. 
all of our dry ingredients in this recipe are going to get sifted. And because we don't have a massive strainer or sieve, we're, we're just going to do them one by one. So once we have all of our flour sifted, we're going to add three cups or 600 grams of granulated sugar. And you'll notice as I'm going through the process, there are some rather large chunks of sugar. You can try to break them up, but some bits are going to be a little bit too impure to pass. That's fine. Just toss them out and then add a little bit more sugar as you see fit. Next, we're going to add one and a half cups or 150 grams of unsweetened cocoa powder. Use something high quality because it's going to make a big difference here. And then we're going to pretend to allow it to mix inside of the stand mixer bowl, but realizing it's not really doing what we want it to before getting in there and breaking it up with a spatula ourselves. And that's everything we have to add for our dry ingredients. Now let's move on to the wet stuff. We're going to start by adding four whole eggs directly into the bowl of our stand mixer. Followed by one and a half cups or 360 grams of buttermilk. <laughs> Followed by precisely two teaspoons of vanilla extract because baking is an exact science and you're not allowed to deviate from the script or whatever nonsense they tell you on these cooking shows and now that we have all of our dry and all of our wet ingredients together we can finally start incorporating them to our cake batter so we're gonna fire it up low and slow before working it up to medium speed and letting it combine for a second and our goal throughout all of this is to make sure that we don't actually over mix the batter. Um, you're going to see a lot of air just coming to the surface in the form of bubbles. And that's perfect. That, that's going to actually help us get a nice, highly raised, highly rised, highly leavened chocolate cake. It's also important to make sure you go back in there with a spatula because uh, that flour and stuff, it's, it's going to kind of pack into the sides because there's a lot of batter inside of the stand mixer. And we want to make sure that we don't have any of those clumps later on because th they won't break up later. They're just going to be raw clumps of flour and cocoa powder and stuff. And like you'll taste them. It's not going to be great. So now it's just about getting the batter evenly divided into our three cake pans. Now, for us, it worked out to be just about three cups of batter per cake pan. And that got us through the entirety of the batter. Your mileage might be a little bit more, a little bit less depending on how much air you were able to incorporate into the batter or just, you know, how, how dense, how thick, or maybe maybe you over whipped it a little bit. It's not going to be the end of the world. Just, uh, just split them on up. And we're going to get these bad boys in an oven at 350 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes until a cake tester, a knife, whatever you have, a toothpick, when you insert it into the center, you want it to come out and have virtually nothing on it. Now, we're playing, by, we're playing by Portillo's rules here, so we're using store-bought fudge frosting the same way they do. The only thing we're gonna do to it that we didn't see them do is I'm gonna actually whisk it up to break it up a little bit and make it easier to spread when we go to decorate our cake. It's also gonna make it a little lighter and a little more fluffy as you're eating it, and those are just important qualities for making a chocolate cake that, in our opinion, doesn't suck, so. Now to begin decorating this bad boy, it's it was a trick I learned from the pastry chefs that I've worked with. But if you throw a little little dollop of the frosting you're going to use on the bottom, it's going to prevent the cake from sliding and shifting as you're going to spread it. And then for the first layer, what I what I did was I went in and to test how it was going to spread, I did a little bit at first, so that when I when it came time to do the second one. I went much more generous on the top because I had a better understanding of how it was going to spread around, but you're just going to use the back of your spatula and press it from edge to edge, trying to get full coverage. And because we had a third layer here, I actually, um, I tried to use the frosting to give me more of a chance to stabilize it by just adding more around the top to give me like a flat surface or a base to stack that third tier of cake on. And then for the third one, we just spread all the way around the top 
before hitting it a little bit on the edges and then we used a bench scraper and a makeshift oh god that, i mean that's that's generous right so we 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 kind of ghetto rigged some sort of spinning thing he had in his dining room to uh, to become a cake spinner here that, that's not its actual purpose but you know desperate times call for desperate measures we made it happen and for the the actual bench scraper part you're just going to use one of the flat edges pressed against the side and you're just going to rotate the cake until it smooths itself out and boom before you know it you have a beautiful three-tiered light fluffy moist delicious chocolate cake that we are going to take in all of its beauty and brutalize inside of a blender so let's get to it now again keeping it to their standards we're going to use vanilla ice cream use whatever your favorite brand is here we have some homemade vanilla gelato if you'd like the recipe for that by the way let us know in the comment section down below we'd be more than happy to hook you up with it then we're going to follow that up with one cup of whole milk and then we add two total pieces of cake you're only going to see the first one initially but don't worry the second one is going to show up we needed to make the actual milkshake thicker we, we wanted to try and get it much closer to the way that you would see it the way that they advertise it and in order for us to do that we needed to use two full slices of cake i know it's as ridiculous as it sounds And then honestly, the only thing left to do is to pour this bad boy into the world's largest glass mug. Shout out to Tom for owning this thing. And then, I mean, it, it was a long recording day and the only thing we actually get to do from this point forward is taste it. So here's, a, here's my live reaction. It's just, it's just why, at <laughs> this point, just why. <laughs> All right, so we gotta taste this thing. Mm -hmm. All right, well. 